Hello, welcome to uh, EFT, basically. Yeah, I've been, uh, I've been thinking about doing this for a while. I play a few games of this throughout my day. I may as well play it and record it. I don't know if it's a bad game. I probably won't upload this or if it's like a game that I think is really uninteresting or maybe I will. I might just make this like a daily series, kind of like Monster Train, because I play this game every day anyway, so I may as well, right? I've been I've been thinking about trying to record more stuff. So if this isn't your cup of tea, that's fine. I don't really I won't be offended, but, you know, more content is good, I feel. So I'm going to play. I've been hovering around uh, Diamond 4, Diamond 3 for the last few weeks, and so I'm trying to find reasons to play more, and recording it is a good reason. I, I've been, I've been really struggling, and I feel like I'm missing some piece, so in also recording this and talking through my thoughts, I can uh, watch these back and go, ah, well this thing I did here was really dumb. And here, like, I watched, I feel like I gained a lot from watching some of those highlights that I put up from stream. And so I figure we could do this. It seems like fun. My general strategy and my general philosophy right now is going to be open with some form of AD item and flex between Urgot, Yone, and Jin. Like, start bow or sword and flex between one of those three. That's been what I've been trying to do. I, for a long time, I was opening Rod and trying to flex between, not even flex, but just trying to get an early Morello and use that to win streak. But I feel like that strategy has kind of left me in weird positions a lot lately because I end up playing units I don't want to. In in my perfect world, I would open every game with like an Echo or a Lissandra and I'd put a Morello on them and we would go nuts. We'd win streak like crazy, but... You know, uh, what I'm thinking I'm going to do as well, especially uh, in games like this one. Eh, never mind. I was going to say I'm just going to pause if there's big downtime bits, but then it loaded. So never mind. I, I have the option to pause and skip ahead for you. And so I may I'll keep an eye on if I want to do that. I think generally speaking, I'm not going to like in theory, I thought that this game was going to have a lot of downtime, but like, I, I find myself a lot of the time not having the time to finish all of my thoughts when playing this. So I'm going to do my best. I'm going to do my best to give you my thoughts and what I'm thinking concisely and clearly. But it's it's a struggle. It really is. Uh, opening up here with Bo. Looking for... Uh, not Rod, but you can make it work. Rage Blade's okay. It's not, like, best on anything other than Kog'Maw, but it's fine, I would say. And then, yeah, I've been messing around with this, and maybe it's wrong to sell Caitlyn here, but I've been messing around with this Innovator start, too. Uh, in the ideal world, I would have Camille, Finge, Dazili, and Ezreal as my board, and that gives you two Clockwork, three Innovator. I've been, I've been playing this, I, was, I went through a big phase of playing Scrap. If I get the money, I'll buy both of these, but I might get an item component here too. Yeah, just get a tier. Tier isn't that bad. Let's see, augment. Oh yeah, we take metabolic for sure. Uh, they did nerf this to after a PvP round, and I could call my shot on armor plating, but like... I don't know, man. If I wanted to try and win streak, I could take thrill. Let me actually look at what everyone else takes. Get richer. Everyone else took, like... Nobody else looks like they're going to be trying to lose streak, so I'm going to take Metabolic. And we're just going to eat the losses here. Which is fine, it's a it's a pretty good opener. And I'll hold. What I was going to do was I was going to slam a Static Shiv, which is fine. This item is great early, because you do all your damage through auto attacks anyway. And you can flex it on to someone later. It has use in AD and AP, because if you're using an AD carry, you get a bonus attack speed, and if you're using an AP carry, you get the magic resistance shred on it. <laughs> Both of which are fine. But for this one, let me get the Impossible get the Warwick. Sort of my specialty. Yeah, if I could, I would just play... Like, I'm, uh, let, me, let me look. Let me see. You're three. You're three. I would... I, I thought about grabbing this Talon, right? But there's two players in this. There's one player in this lobby who is too weak. That's okay. 
I would say. I'm actually going to play it like this. I'm going to play a really weak board, but I'm going to guarantee it. I'm going to take a lot of damage. It's part of the plan. Trust. I just what ha what often happens to me is I will set up and I will take all this damage, but then I won't be able to convert into any sort of actual meaningful late game. So my plan here is to get a lot of money and make sure that I have a plan, basically. I'm not buying the Quinn pair. I could sell like Ezreal or Singed for it, but I'm not gonna buy it because I don't think I'm gonna play it anytime soon. I'm pretty sure I'm going to sell like almost all of my bench to make 10 and we're going to play extreme greed. Yeah. I was hoping to pull a Yordle, right? And then play the three Yordle money opener, but alas. So I'm going to sell. I don't want to sell the Ezreal. What I want to do is I want to play Blitzcrank. And the problem with playing Blitzcrank is I become too strong. I'm... I'm going to commit to losing here. Oh yeah, this guy used Rich Get Richer to go 5. A pretty decent strategy, really. I don't think it's bad. Uh, I have to sell something to make 10 here, and I think I'm going to sell the Singed. And probably play the random one of Talon as my last unit. In the perfect world, I get, like, Ziggs here. I just, I want my third Yordle. Ziggs, it's, it's crazy because it's, like, Ziggs or Poppy, right? Is what I'm missing. There's Poppy. I can do this. Cool. And then, let me look. Are you, this guy got a little stronger, so I think I can afford to play Talon over Ezreal. And just sell. I did ha I did land the Zillion, so I could have played the Innovator opener as well, but I'm I'm committing to the lose streak here off of Metabolic. The philosophy, if you're wondering, is uh, the damage I take here, I'm going to heal 10 of it back. So at the end of the day, if I take like 40 damage guaranteeing my lose streak, I'm still going to have... Or not 40, I'm going to take like max 30 damage guaranteeing my lose streak, and then I'm going to end the... And end the lose streak with all this money, and I'm going to heal 10 of it back, so I'm really only going to take 20 damage for this guaranteed, like, it should be near 50 gold by Krugs if everything goes well. And good good loss here, I took, or killed two. In my perfect world, I kill one to two units every round. I should hold this Lulu, because there's no reason not to. But, actually there is, I might get too strong. The problem is there's someone in the lobby that's a little bit, uh, a little bit weaker than me. I'm just going to grab the cloak. Although this is also something that I think I need to look at and really consider. I, I take cloak here because it makes runans and I'm looking to play Urgot or Yon. But realistically speaking, I only need one cloak in this comp for the runans. Whereas I can make use of multiple swords and multiple chain vests. So it might be wrong to take the cloak here and it might be a lot better to take the sword or like a sword or a vest there since I get my pick. I can do this. It's just a just a thought, right? The other reason I took this though is because it gives me three gold, which is uh, like a, a real legitimate benefit. I'm pretty sure I actually need to get weaker if I want to lose to this player. I'm pretty sure I need to play like I'm gonna play an extremely weak board here. I want to keep the echo, but I'm gonna sell the talent. Yeah, I like I have to. I have to really commit. I'm actually gonna to commit to 30 gold here, even. But my, if my talent jumps his Kogma, I think I would actually win this. So I'm gonna sell everything and keep the loose streak. And yeah, I kill no units for it, but it's fine. It's worth it. Trust. I'm 76 HP, so I've taken. I've taken, what, eight healing? Uh oh, someone's pinging. I don't know. Oh, because this guy's level five and he lost. Probably mad. It's a lot easier to keep the the lose streak than it is to keep the win streak, I gotta tell you. Uh, now that I lost to the guy, or I, now, yeah, now that I lost to the guy that's gonna crush me, I should play... I, I can play a little bit stronger, right? I won't fight this player so I can get a little bit better. Caitlyn... Great unit to play when you're trying to lose, because she'll usually kill one unit, but she won't kill everyone. In fact, I'm, I'm going to put a little bit more down here. 
I'm gonna put the bow on her. I'm not gonna make the runans because I don't want to. Oh dear, I'm gonna take a lot. That's gonna hurt. It's okay. You know, you fight first place. Sometimes you take uh, you take the full five unit you know, loss. It happens like this sometimes. Yeah, got a two star singe with a stone plate. What can you do? And we were we were very weak, but. I'm 70 HP with uh, not quite as much gold as I would have liked, but it's all right. It's like, what, it's 38? I'm going to go into Krugs with a 5 loose streak, though, which is an extra 3 gold per round. So the hard part now is going to be converting this, right? I'm going to go ahead and level, because I'm a little worried I lose to Krugs. And we're going to figure out how we convert this position uh, into one where I'm not going to die by wolves, right? That's the hard part with an opener like this, is you have to figure out how you go from... How, how do I go from this board state to one that doesn't die? And the answer is not gonna... I'm not gonna roll gold. I'm probably just gonna level. Get stronger through leveling. It gets me stronger without having to spend... or while well, while keeping pace, basically. Oh, hey, Zach, Vex. Uh, one, two... So I have... Two... Or, hey, where'd you go? or I could probably, I'm going to keep these units, but I'm, I'm just going to keep them because I could maybe play something with Vex. Don't worry, I got this. Charmed, I'm, I'm looking sure. at the Arcanist idea, but I have two bows, which I don't love for Arcanist. Uh, I can play Vex and Ziggs. I think I'm, I'm down to level here. It doesn't cost me... Too much money overall. This board is awkward, extremely awkward, but it costs me, it puts me back to 30 gold, but it should help me to not take as much damage here is my feeling. I'm holding these. I think I'm not gonna go for Arcanist here. One Vex does not mean I should play Arcanist. Just threw in the random Zac because he'll hopefully help me kill a unit. Yeah, I'm actually gonna kill a lot. Oh wait, do I do I win this? Did I become too strong? What a nightmare! This guy's weaker than me. That's actually not that bad, I guess. Two, four. I'm gonna make forty. I'm gonna make forty. It's a bit of a shame, but metal is harder than flesh. Three star poppy, huh? Right on. Where's the action? Can't can't knock the hustle, I suppose. I'm just thinking about it here. I, I could like I could try to put in this syndicate idea. I feel like I just play this board. It's not strong, but it's okay. And I'll make the runans give her another bow. Let her go nuts here. Is this the Kog'Maw reroll guy? I guess he's not playing Kog'Maw reroll, he's playing Ezreal instead of Kog'Maw, which is like... Sure, dude. Live your life, I suppose. Whatever unit you want to play as your reroll target. Oh, because he has he has Featherwits, that's why he's doing this. This is the... Your 1 and 2 cost champions gain bonus attack and movement speed, so he's just rolling for a bunch of 1 and 2 cost champions. Although, it would be a little bit better for him if his Ezreal wasn't a 1 star. I'm not here to judge. I'm just gonna. I can do this. Scrap heart is interesting. I could try to play something with it, but probably not. I feel like it's not a not a super good line from this position. Cause what am I gonna play? I'm gonna try to play like Trundle from here. Yeah, I got a lot of Trundles. It's a long way to the top here. I'm down to take weak spot. Oh hey, Fiora. Sharp blade, sharp mind. Ooh, that's nice. My board is okay, I would say. I can play. I can definitely play something with challengers here as well. I have I have the stuff for it. And so the goal here is going to be. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not going to make any changes. The goal here is going to be. Uh, get like I, I could try to play Fiora items as well. I think she needs like Bloodthirster though, which is two items away. But you can make her a Titans. It's going to kind of depend. There's two ways that I feel like you play around this, and it's either 
Fiora carries with three socialite, or Yon carries with six challengers. I already made the Runan, so I'm probably going to look to play Yon. I didn't see anyone else playing challengers also. Wouldn't be too bad of a pivot. I'm mostly there. That Caitlyn ult had hit the GP. Would have killed the GP? Oh, hey, nice. Not too bad. Yeah, winning this round was really unfortunate. I did not save much HP, but lost my huge... I lost a lot of income for that, which is a real shame, but we'll recover. My item here is without a doubt... Uh, it's not sword. <laughs> I was gonna say, definitely gonna take a sword here. Yeah, no, I'm not. Definitely not gonna take a sword here. There's no swords. Best is fine. It makes GA or Titans resolve. Let me see what everyone else is playing. That guy's innovators. Hmm, not really. I guess he's looking to go like Urgotish. I don't know what this is. Uh, it's like a. This could this could flex into like. Uh, it kind of looks like he's trying to go Syndic. It's actually with that Shaco on the board. Just some Mira. But, but like having that Caitlyn in for that long is kind of criminal. We're socialite. That's fine. And then I actually, no, I don't want to play socialite. I'd rather play two challenger here. Samira, you just kind of position her in the middle like this because she's uh, she's short range. Is is her problem? I had the Caitlyn in. I remember now for sniper, and then I took sniper out. We're just gonna we're gonna chill. I probably could have leveled to seven here and kept my economy. I could have had forty gold level seven here, but it's fine. I'll level on the next round. I don't, honestly don't feel like leveling would have made that big. Of, I, I would have maybe killed one unit more, which is not that big of an issue. Good try, Poppy. You almost had that. Uh, we'll pivot out of Yordles after Wolves. Probably we're playing Yordles just for the free money. In case you're wondering that one as well, I'm trying to be like. I'm trying to offer you some insight into my thought process without just info dumping like crazy on you here. There's a lot there's a lot that goes into it all. And I'm trying to give you a good like middle ground here. I'm I'm weak right now because my main damage sources are one star, and I'm gonna be weak until that's not the case. And that's fine. I will roll on seven for a little bit to get there. Like, I can slow roll after this round. I'm very rich. There's my friend dropping a Bazinger Gamer Time Zooey Mama. <laughs> yeah, shout out to my friend Jason for that one. Bazinger Gamer Time Zooey Mama. Truly poetry. I think this guy loses to me. Which is fine, right? I'm, I'm not too worried about my income at this point. I'm 50 gold down. level 7 on wolves. I'm ahead of the curve quite a bit. So I'm happy to... I'm happy to take the... Take the health back, basically. I'm feeling greedy. It's not a big issue. Uh, stable for this board is going to be 2 star Samira. Is what we're going to be rolling for. Where's the action? Mm -hmm. I'll take the Janna. Yeah, I've been holding on Someone's to this guy, holding to on to the Zack, because a two-star Zack is decent. I could also try to play, like, a Jin idea, but I don't know about a Jin idea the here. Is set. I got a lot of ideas here. could try to play, like, Trundle, Zack, Jin, and then pick up a Sniper like MF. It's like the it's like the Bodyguard Jin line, but I play two Bruiser instead. Oh, or I could just get two Brahms here. Uh-huh. This is, this is a little overwhelming. Let me... I'm gonna sell these. Fiora, yeah. I should have bought that Seraphim. Give me one moment. Uh, I could also... I can keep the Urgot idea open. Oh uh, no. I've, I've, made, I've made many, many tactical mistakes here. I'm looking, I'm looking. Yeah, I definitely should have played Urgot from this position. Uh, for my Yone, I will make the last Whisper. This is Armor Shred. I know I have Weak Spot Armor Shred, but this is more Armor Shred. It does 70%. Mostly take Weak Spot for the uh, heal cut that it gives. Yeah, I should be on my way to Urgot here for sure. I had a better line than this, but alas, I did not see it in time. It's okay. I can recover this, I swear. 
I could buy the Oriana pair as well, but I think I want to I wanna save my money and work this one out here. I can get there, I'm sure of it. One sword gives me GA, so I want to make something out of the rest of this, and it's probably going to be a... I don't know. Where's Do not hunt to kill. Now I need a Samira. And I want to play... Leona Braum. I'm going to keep the Vex for now. There's Warwick. Sell that. Win. What am I missing? I'm missing Samira. I'm going to eat shit on these rounds until it all works out. Uh, it's like... It's tough, man. It's a little tough to work this one out. I'm close. I think I'm close. I think, honestly, it could have also gone for a socialite Fiora idea here. But, oh, this guy's level 8. Huh. Any round that I don't just outright take a full unit loss is a good round to me. So, like, this is good. I definitely, I, I've walked past a lot of better options here. Like, I could have, if I... If I just went for it, I could have. I, I could definitely have played a Fiora three socialite idea here, or Urgot here would have been fine as well. But I will protect you. it's okay. There's two Star right Leona. There we are. They may have men, but you have me. And I'm going to play Warwick for six challengers. This is not strong enough, I don't think, but it's pretty close. This should be strong enough for me to not take a million damage. What am I going to do with the rest of these items? It's probably going to be... I don't need Morello, right? Because I took a weak spot. I don't need to make Morello. So I can just kind of sit on this. Maybe make like a... What's the, what's the item? Redemption for Braum is okay. And you can see the six challenger attack speed starts to reset in clear whole boards. I get a sword for Yon. Back, these are good Yon items, but I could also, if I miss the sword for some reason, I can make him uh, like a static shiv maybe. I, probably not. Probably want to give him a defensive option, but uh, my defensive options for Yon are not very good here. So I'll just get the sword. I actually could take the Kaisa with the belt. She's good. She's very strong. Also take the spatula. I'm gonna take the Kaisa with the belt. I know I said I don't need Morellos, but like Kaisa with the belt's pretty good. I get to take out this worthless ass Warwick and play a pretty strong unit in place of him. And my level eight gets a lot stronger off of this. If my own doesn't have three perfect items, but I have this early Kaisa, I think it's an okay trade. It's a it's a tough call though. I think that you you can make different a different choice there and have it be similarly good. How much is it for me to level? 44? I'm gonna level. I'm basically going to get a decent amount stronger off of leveling here. I wonder if it's better to give her Archangels. No, I think the Morello burn on the whole enemy team is worthwhile. Because then I also keep this tier available. And then we sit like this. My positioning is like this, so I'll go over the positioning real quick. You position Yon back so that the enemies don't target him initially. He has to walk up, and so they'll target someone else first. And then I position my Kaisa not in the back corner in case someone has Blitzcrank, and I position someone to the left of her because Blitzcrank can... Uh, I'll, I'll illustrate it here after this round for you, but Blitzcrank, she's not safe if she just has someone to the right of her. She's safe now. It also gives a little time in case an assassin jumps on her. The rest of the game from here is going to be uh, wait until I'm stable on 8, which is going to be Yon 2. Let's see what I get here. Challenger crown. Oh yeah. There's also, like, makeshift armor 3 is not the worst, but I, like, challenger crown's so good. I get to play 8 challengers here without any problems. Like, I just put it in. 8 challengers like that. So six challengers gives 80% base attack speed, which doubles to 160 on a kill. And eight challengers gives 130% attack speed. I think, so there is, the, I feel like there's two camps here. You either play this with six challengers and 
cut two of the worst challengers out of this comp, which would probably be Camille Samira. But the amount of this is I this is so much attack speed, and your comp scales really well with attack speed with the Kaisa because of her ability. For every time she auto attacks in a combat, she shoots an extra one of her missiles spread evenly among all enemies, right? So I should be scouting and looking around, but it is what it is. Oh, this is that guy who three-starred the poppy. What is this? This is like weird yordles. It basically, by taking the taking the extra challenger attack speed, the Kaisa just shoots off a ton of missiles. And also, the faster you attack, the faster you build your mana bar, right? Two, two main ideas here. If this guy's playing Yordles, why did he take level up? You don't want to level up to find Yordles. You have to level down to find Yordles. This this one this player's having a rough one. I, I sympathize with him. But yeah. And you play uh you play the front line like this because you have two bodyguard. Braum gives good uh, crowd control with his ult, and Leona gives Academy for Yone. Now I need to look through the lobby and see. I, I want to categorize what pe people are playing. This guy's like mixed damage. This is AD. It kind of mixed damage. This is also mixed damage, but it's primarily ability power on Kog'Maw. Are there? There's two people playing Kog'Maw? Oh. Let me see what I got. Cloak, tier. This goes. This harkens back to when I said uh, maybe I shouldn't take the... Maybe I shouldn't take the cloak, right? Remember that? I remember that. Uh, so what am I going to make here with this? I'm going to make a Chalice of Power. Well, let me let me roll first, and I'll make my items. I need Yone 2. Mirror is okay. No, I just need Yon. That's tough, buddy. Uh... That is rather tough. I'm going to make a Chalice to give extra ability power to my Kai'Sa here. I think I'm going to give Yona Titans. Is fine. My comp is very strong with 8 challengers plus Kai'Sa, so I'm not that Next pressed. Try to leave a dent. I, I want to hold the Yumi's here. So the idea with Yumi is... Most of the lobby's AP, so I can cut Leona... Braum for Yumi. I can also just play Yumi on 9 if I make it there, which I'm going to start econing whenever I go into. I'm just going to keep rolling until I hit it, though. It's tough. It's very tough. Yon is going to take a Titans, I guess, and here's that redemption I talked about earlier. Look at the lobby. My positioning is okay. Who did I just fight? Fought oh, this guy. That's a big frog. I think I'm okay here. Uh, I want to position Yon to be same side as the main enemy carry that I'm expecting to fight so that he can put his ghost on the back line. You can watch it happen here, maybe. Uh, he's going to hopefully put his guy. He puts his ghost over here and then it moves through the back line is roughly the idea. Maybe I don't need Yon too because of eight challengers even. I don't know. Seems all right how I'm doing here. Yeah, I'm, scout I'm scouting the lobby to try and see where I want to put my own. And most of the players are positioned back right. There it is. Cool. I was already very strong, but other players are going to start hitting somewhere in this stage. So I want to be as strong as I think I need to be. This player, this 7 Syndicate 6 Assassin guy will crush me right now but there's two blitz cranks okay i'm gonna reposition slightly i'm gonna do this this helps it insulate me a little bit against the assassin player if i fight him it makes me worse against this guy but you know as long as kaisa doesn't get obliterated it's fine well, the challenger game plan is basically just to get your first reset and then wipe out the entire board with the snowball effect that happens. And that's what we're bit, we've been doing with eight challengers as well. God, this was such a high roll on the prismatic augment. You love to see it. Oh, I am a I'm a big prismatic augment complainer. I often feel like I get a little bit got 
pardon me, not the options menu. I feel like I get a little bit got by the prismatic augments, but today we high rolled. The best thing to look for here are items that are good on Kaisa. So, of these, it's Giant Slayer. Giant Slayer is just a flat damage increase for her. If someone takes it, which it's pretty likely they do. Yeah. Oh, that guy was indecisive. It's fine. I just take the Warmogs. You can't take a second Morello on her, in case you're wondering. There's, it's a unique item, only one per champion. I do feel like, at the end of the day, picking the Kaisa was the correct choice. Even though I didn't get my perfect Yon items, I got this pretty strong Kaisa and eight challengers. Like, this board, this board without Kaisa, this board with Warwick would be a little grim, right? I'm proud of myself for the heads up choice. Because I feel like often I miss that and don't take the five cost. And also now, now that I'm winning, Prismatic, or not Prismatic, a Metabolic Boost has been cashing my health back up. Cashing? How about catching my health back up? A little bit better. I'm gonna stay positioned like this. Yeah. I'm positioned for this uh, six assassin, seven syndicates guy. As all I need is the first kill. And then I should wipe him out. Yeah. Yone. The Titans makes Yone uh, very strong. Real quick here, in case this is uh, new content to you, I'll go through all my items. I didn't really talk about them too much, and I apologize. I'll go through my items and what I have going here. Uh, when we when we get back. Let me, let me, I'll, I'll take a quick look through and scout, and then I'll go through the items. But this is definitely a top four. I don't know if I beat the dragon, though. Probably move to back left now. Did I kill that guy? No, he's 1 HP. So I have, on Yon, I have Runans. Runans gives him uh, bonus AD, which is cool. And then, I need to, I'm going to move real quick. One sec. I'm, wa I'm waiting to move until everyone has left my board. I want to position like this. Yeah, so I have, have Runans on Yon, which gives him this uh, bolt that he pops off. And that means that if he, it gives him more targets that he's damaged for the challenger reset. On top of that, he has Last Whisper, which shreds through armor. And then he has, uh, Titan's Resolve is the last one. I'll hover over to read that one to you, because that one has a lot of words on it. And then Braum has Warmogs, which is just pure bonus health. It's a thousand bonus health. And then he has Redemption, which gives him health and mana, and every five seconds he heals uh, all himself and all allies around him for 18% of their missing health. It also gives, like, AoE damage reduction, but I've never actually seen that do anything meaningful. The other item Yon has is Titan's Resolve. So whenever he attacks or takes damage, he gains a stack, and at 25 stacks he gets bonus armor and magic resist. He also gets uh, two attack damage and two ability power per stack. He stacks this up really quick because of the crazy attack speed. He also stacks this up really quick because his ghost counts as attacking for it, I'm pretty sure. So it gets it gives him a little durability that he missed out on because I didn't get Guardian Angel for him. Which is nice. Uh, other item here is Chalice of Power. Samira gives herself and everyone near her a little bit of extra ability power, which is good because Kaisa is primarily an ability power damage dealer. It is, it is extremely hard for me to beat this player. This guy is unbelievably strong. But we're going to try our best. I'm going to move like this. I'm going to get my Yone shrouded, but I don't think it really matters. I fight that player. I, I, maybe maybe this positioning is even wrong because of the Kog'Maw players in the back right, or back left, but I don't really fear the Kog'Maw players because of the Kai'Sa. I'm pretty sure I just run them over. Yeah. Yon does a lot of the damage, but Kog'Maw, he just can't really hold it out. Did both of the Kog'Maw players go... If both of the Kog'Maw players bought forward. That's tough, buddies. I forgot to equip my Sunfire Cape. It's not a huge deal. It's just... Uh, it's every two seconds a random enemy within two tiles gets burned for 16%. Max health is true damage for eight seconds, and it cuts their healing. This doesn't matter because I already have two forms of healing reduction from Weak Spot and from Morello. So I should equip it still for the stats, but like my combats are over very quickly. This is going to be a top two where I battle it out with this Innovator High Roller, and I think that he has rolled higher than I have. 
Uh, there's two schools of thought here for my win condition. I'm pretty sure my win condition is going to be two star Kaisa, two star Yumi. And I'm not going to, I'm basically not going to do anything with my money until I can go nine. I have enough health and I need to just save my money. Because he's already nine. I need to have money to roll for my two star five cost now to win this one. And hope that this Yone gets his first reset and goes nuts. I think I should win this, but that Tom Kench is deadly. Two star Tom Kench? Nah, it's over. Nice. Like, my board lives for a lot longer than I expect it to. Would love for the Assassin player to win this. Any any life and any time I don't have to fight the enemy Assassin player does win it. Very good. Any amount of life that gets chipped off of this guy is great for me. Base is okay. There's like a few schools of thought here for where I go with this one. If I'm gonna play Yumi, I can probably take out Leona. Which is good. So what I wanna do is I wanna hold good five star or good five costs that I can two star and play around. So like I can play Jace as a frontliner here to help out. I'm gonna reposition as well. I wanna move my Kaisa out of the way of the shroud. I don't care if the Yone gets shrouded, I just want to have the Kaisa not get shrouded. I don't think I win this because the Innovator Dragon should shut me down. Yeah, and my Yone just gets bursted down really quick. It's tough, but it's also to be expected. He's been rolling all his gold for a while, he's 0 gold level 9, and I have all my money still. It's to be expected. Part of the plan. Uh, another line I can follow here is looking for, oh hey, a challenger symbol. I'd take this. Sure. It lets me play eight challengers and cut out uh probably probably Camille is the worst one. Because Samir is fine. She's like she's holding the chalice. I think it's Camille. And then I'll play frontline Jace here. He's fine. And then what do I need? 56 to level? I think I level now. And I'm gonna play Yumi. I'm looking for... Let's Yumi's play. fine. Alio is interesting. Yumi too would be good if I could have gotten in time. It's okay. Oh, I needed to reposition for this guy. I didn't even look, I was busy rolling. It's okay, my, the Yumi shield got my Kaisa out of there so she can live to fight. For a little bit anyway. But yeah, this is where the no GA on my own starts to hurt me a little bit. It's okay. I think rolling down here is fine. The Assassin player two-starred the Akali, and so he's going to start to beat me, but I have time. I also, I could have uh, repositioned there. It's not, not too frightening. I think that I'm going to fight this guy here. I think I can beat him. I think I can beat him. I have to A, recognize I'm going to fight him, and then B, reposition. So to beat this guy, I actually want to play like this, right? And then probably Yumi here. To beat this player, I position, I bring Jace to the back line because I need more sustained damage against this player. I don't need more front line. And Jace will help the, I guess he only really helps the Quinn because Kim... Kaisa's short range. Also, he's out of range of the dragon back here. How about that? Yeah, he did 4300 with his attack speed. And I think one of these players actually leaves the game here, which is good. Oh, nice. That Akali player was getting scary. An uh, Academy Emblem? Ready. I guess I can play four Academy. Huh. I was going to cut this Leona out, but if it's going to show me fourth Academy, why not? I think it's a GA for his Jinx, which is rough. Why does he have Zillion in? Or why, why does he have Singed in, I mean? Does he get Chemtech? I feel like you really want to get rid of that thing and play the Zillion instead for Clockwork, right? I don't know. I don't play Innovators. I'm no expert. Do I want to make an Academy? Probably. It's someone... So Academy... 
It's just flat ADAP is what I'm playing it for, so I'll just put it on Kaisa. And we roll for two star Kaisa, uh, two star Jace, basically, is it? I don't think I'm finding the Yone, so I'm not gonna try to spend money on him. Fully charged. Fully charged. Same thing here, right? I just want uh, damage to him. I'm gonna assume, I I'm going to make an assumption here. I tend to do this. I'm going to assume that this guy moves. And I'm going to move as a result. Sometimes players don't move, but I'm going to assume that he moves his shroud. I was right. I got my Yone out of it. I did get it on the Kaisa still, but I think that's fine. I guess I actually got some more shots in because of that. Because she got in the little Jace speed boost thingy. Yeah. Right, he didn't put his GA down. Hey, I won. Nice. Good stuff. I think that... This is an interesting game, and I feel like it's... This is an interesting game because I, what I've been feeling lately with this, with TFT, is I try to flex too much, and I, like, lose out, basically. Uh, I I was thinking, I, I had the two-star Zac, I saw some Mundos, I saw that Urgot, and I was like, oh man, I missed out, I should have played Urgot, right? The, the Yon line is fine. I think that you just kind of commit, right? And making the heads up play to grab the Kaisa was good. It was pretty lucky that I saw that, but still strong. I, I think that this would have been a little worse off without the Kaisa. But I, I think that the Urgot line would have worked out as well, but then it comes down to the Augment, right? Getting the Challenger crown was very helpful. Being able to play eight Challengers and just reset on entire boards really fast. Good stuff, good stuff. Good game. Uh, yeah, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed, don't forget to leave me a like. Subscribe if you want to see more, and I'll see you in the next one. Have a good one.